this job. We try to save as many people as we can. Sometimes that doesn't mean everybody. But you don't give up. New York. Washington, D.C. Sokovia. Okay, that's enough. Captain, people are afraid. That's why I'm here. We need to be put in check. Whatever form that takes, I'm game. I'm sorry, Tony. If I see a situation pointed south, I can't ignore it. Sometimes I wish I could. Sometimes I want to punch you in your perfect teeth. I know we're not perfect. But the safest hands are still our own. to watch their back. This doesn't have to end in a fight, Tony. You just started a war. Stay down. Final warning. I could do this all day. All right, I've run out of patience. On to Roos! Hey, everyone. <laughs> Guys, seriously. <laughs> we got Hawkeye. <laughs> All right, how you guys doing? <laughs> so, Mr. Renner. Yes. Bring us up to date on the Captain America saga. Where does this film begin versus where the last one left off? Well, I had to watch that. It's the first time I've seen it. <laughs> and uh, I haven't seen the movie yet, but it usually, like all these movies, they kind of continue on from um, the last one. You know, this is sort of like Avengers 2.5, if you will. You know, So um, I can only speak for, I mean, again, I have not seen the movie. I can only speak like for what I did. I was in retirement back on the farm, and then they called me out of retirement. Playing golf. Exactly, exactly. So for for the plight of all these characters, it's uh, um, you don't have to ask them. <laughs> what do you think Hawkeye brings to the franchise? Because your character has been developed more and more with each film. So now he has a family. We know from the last one he has a family. He has a backstory. He's got complex issues. Yeah, I mean, like all the characters, I think, are very rich in this uh, universe. And they kind of do dove into some really interesting parts of, of, uh, of Clint, I think. And I think he's a wonder, very wonderful sort of grounding rod, um, sort of very accessible character. Um, not unlike Widow, but even a more a very real way where, he, you know, he's on a farm with, with a family. So it kind of counterbalances like a guy flying around with a hammer to a guy that just, like, has a hammer and, you know, builds a house with it, you know? So... I think it's kind of interesting for, for that, I think. And I know you've said in past interviews that one of the things that really attracted you to Hawkeye long-term is exploring his humanity. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, initially it was always about, there's a guy with a high skill set, so I, I knew how to grab onto that as, a, as an actor. Uh, I, again, I don't know how Hemsworth and, and those guys kind of do those things that they do. I have to kind of find a reality and truth to, to those things. And, and they do it in a very, in a way that I could never do. So I was, I was glad that my, that, that Clint is a, uh, is a, is a guy with a high skill set. So that, that was interesting to me. How have you been able to ground him in a movie that, that's this explosive and this big? Do you have to consciously think about it or do you just play him as he's written? No, all the, all the like all these things that, that he does is very sort of uh, practical. So I don't, there's not a lot of CGI outside of like, 
firing an arrow. Um, everything else is, you know, me doing it. It allows me to do the stunts, <clears throat> and I don't have to uh, rely upon VFX to, to, to kind of make the character is what he is, you know. I don't have to hide in a mask and have a stunt guy do it. I just get to do all my own stuff, which is great. Um, and then, um, yeah, I don't know. I think that's, that's probably the most interesting thing for me in it. Are you like a bow and arrow expert at this point? You no, know, now Hawkeye archery is not real archery. You know, it's 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 very flashy, and uh, but yeah, I can shoot a bow and arrow at this point. Yeah. What's been the coolest stunt that you've ever been able to do? Oh man, I feel there's a bunch of them, man. There's, <laughs> every one of them, every one of them. Yeah, I don't think there's there's one that stands out that's better than another one. Following you guys on Instagram, I feel like you seem to really enjoy one another's company. Has doing these movies formed a huge bond for the cast? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's the best part, I feel like, about doing these, these type of films, or, you know, especially with these guys, it's, it's the cast that makes it the most pleasurable, even though it could be hot and sweaty and really unpleasant, and, um, but uh, yeah, it's the, it's the cast that, that makes it so great, and then, you know, create a bigger bond over the years and um, yeah there's no group uh, I'd rather go be around personally on and off camera what of yourself have do you see in Hawkeye what characteristics characteristics I, I don't know I feel like it, you kind of do that as an actor with with every character you have to sort of connect to it somehow you insert some of your own sort of BS or uh, sense of humor or whatever it might be that works for that character you have to find some sort of connection to it um, some more than others. And, and Clint, I feel like, especially with now that they've gone down this road with the family and the farm and retirement and all these things, I mean, there's a lot of through lines that, you know, that are kind of running in my life now currently. Um, but then I think there's a sort of irreverent sense of humor and his, his sort of realistic bit, you know, like the whole thing about, you know, fighting robots and the city's flying and he's got a bow and arrow and, you know, he's just got that, he's just a realist sort of, uh, in a sense of humor, I think that's kind of a bit me. Um, no nonsense and stands up for your friends and that sort of thing. It's belief systems, I think. I would have said the dry reverent sense of humor also, having interviewed you how many times now? <laughs> I think you have a pretty awesome sense of humor. <laughs> well, some media doesn't think so, but <laughs> it's misinterpreted. Trust me, he's kidding. It's just a dry, dry sense of humor. That's right. Hawkeye seems so unflappable, at least in this movie. And again, since you haven't seen it, hard to ask you about specific things. But, and also, we don't want to give anything away. But are you as unflappable as he is in real life, like when faced with a crisis? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm the oldest of seven kids in the family and uh, always been sort of the, the hub and the, and the rock um, in decision making because I don't make emotional decisions. and. I just became good at decision making in life. One of the things that I find so interesting about you is that right now you're professionally in just, I think, an amazing sweet spot. But even when you were starting out, you said that you always had a confidence and always had a fearlessness when you went into auditions and that if they didn't cast you, that was their loss, not yours. How did you come about that? Because so many actors have the opposite approach where they take it personally, they dwell on it, they internalize it. You know, I, I, and I've thought about that many times over the years as I've, as I've talked to my little brothers and sisters and I think confidence in, in anything we do is, is a very attractive quality. I feel like I've been attracted to people when they're confident in what they do. Even if they make a mistake, at least they're confident and know they can find a solution to make up for that mistake. Um, I'm, not, and I'm not sure exactly ultimately where it comes from. I, I can gather that, you know, I always had love in my life. Um, so I had something, no matter what I did, like if I went to jail, <laughs> I, my mom and dad would bail me out. I knew that. I guess a lot of people don't have that or don't have someone that always has their back in some way. My parents don't get me in a lot of ways. Um, my mom doesn't understand me in certain ways. My father doesn't understand me in other ways, but they always have my back. And I have to imagine that that's where the base of it comes from allowed me to go make mistakes. They even challenged me to go fail and that they would still love me because you know, those failures will teach me my strengths and my, give me my successes, you know. Those sort of belief systems. I think that's where it comes, I couldn't tell you. Maybe I was just born, I have no idea.
No. I don't know. I think it's great. I think yeah. it's really impressive to have that. Especially yeah, but then there's my sister, industry. who's the complete opposite of me, and we had the same parents. Couldn't be more opposite of me and needing somebody else to tell her what to do and that sort of thing, you know, so it's hard to say. And I'm sure that that served you well, too, because obviously you were an overnight sensation, a newbie in the Hurt Locker, only having worked, what, 20 years to get there? Yeah. The, yeah. Um, <laughs> No, but I loved all those stories that ran that I'm sure you guys saw, you know, introducing Jeremy Renner Hollywood's latest discovery. You're like, right. what? <laughs> uh, yeah. But did, did becoming famous at a later age, do you think it gave you more perspective? I think I, it would allow me to really probably enjoy the experience more and not be overwhelmed by the intensity of attention. And... Um, I took it kind of for what it was, and, and a lot of it felt earned, and I just could really be very present and enjoying it and not making dumb mistakes, and things probably would have happened to me at 24 versus 34, 34, whatever the hell it was. I'm dating myself, but, um, you know, you, you're more applicable to, you're, to make mistakes, you know, to, to make dumb, th to do dumb things. It happens to a lot of, a lot of people that, that hit early. Earlier, and then yeah. and then they crash and burn under their own. Fame. Yeah, because you, like. you, know, you don't have you don't have a base of, of, of friends to kind of balance you out. You don't know who your friends are at that time. Dude, I have I had I have twenty people I've known twenty years that at that point. So I had a lot of people, a lot of a solid base of, of human beings to uh, for checks and balances on, on on the good and bad things in life for me. Do you go with your gut when you read a script? Because you're I feel like you manage to really straddle both the worlds of the superhero big ticket movies like Born and you know the Captain America fr a franchise with David O. Russell films yeah. and Denis Villeneuve films. Yeah. I mean, well, it's always the same thing. It's always first you know, the character and what the world is. And um, I'm an audience member, just like anybody else, to go to see a movie. And um, as an artist par participating in it, it's like, who do I get to learn from? Who do I get to surround myself with? And, um, you know, what's the world is the, the most interesting thing first, because I feel like there's only 12 stories to be told um, from Greek mythology, and then we just retell them in different ways. So what's the world? Like, like Hurt Locker is a really good example. And again, there's not a lot of story in that. That's just characters living in this really interesting world that people just happen to be current and at the time and blah, 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 blah. So that's kind of what I look for. And then, you know, how do I learn and grow? Otherwise, I don't really want to repeat, repeat something. What film that you've done have you uh, grown the most from, do you think, in retrospect? Uh, I mean, The Hurt Locker was a big one, for sure, because, you know, it was just a little white boy from Modesto, California, thr thrusted into the Middle East during, you know, a really interesting time in the Middle East. Um, so I learned a lot more as a man than I did as an artist. Um, but, that, yeah, that was, a, that was a big one. And then having, you know, Catherine Bigelow... Uh, you know, is our champion. It was, it was uh, tremendous. I love her to death. So, yeah, that was probably the biggest one. And what about as an actor? I think it's every job. Learn, you learn, you know, when you learn, work with great people, you learn different things every time. And as soon as you think you know the answer, then you're already wrong, I think. So, it just, I learn with every job. It's, it's the greatest part of, of working in this at least for me, or at least my perspective in this industry. If you could sum up one thing that you've taken away from the Avengers experience, what would it be? And you can't say your action figure. <laughs> um, I think it's, uh, well, I think friendships. I think it's the biggest thing I took from uh, this whole Marvel thing, is friendships, for sure. How has being in the franchise impacted your career in the sense of the choices available to you and how you choose your projects? Well, you know, now you have five-year-old kids kind of running up to you. That's kind of great. You know, that's usually they'd run away from me from the, having half the movies I've done <laughs> or they can't see it or this terrifying resting face of mine. Um, <laughs> But, um, yeah, I think in a very work. kind of, you know, global way, you know, kind of everywhere I go, it's, it's you know, you're kind of welcomed by kids. And that, that is probably the coolest thing that could ever happen to, to me, I think. That is just, and then they're, it's usually their creepy parents are dressed up as, as Hawkeye or Captain America. I'm like, oh, okay, you just ruined a really beautiful moment with your son. And <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, it's you know then you know it's also interesting too because like when you're an actor, no matter what you're doing, you're always unemployed as soon as the film's done. You don't know when the next job is or what the next job is, and you kind of learn very quickly in this universe that oh wow, it, I guess I will have a job in 2016 and 18 and. We're gonna be doing how big it is, what it is. Maybe they kill me off, maybe they don't. But at least to know that you have a kind of a big movie that's coming out affords me to, like you were saying in your question, is that I, that I can go do a smaller movie that's like Wind River, like, like Wind River. I just completed right and things like that that kind of fill my soul. And then um, yeah, it allows me to kind of do, make more informed decisions. Tell me about Wind River because I know you uh, Instagrammed a lot about it. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful film. Again, this is the, it's an interesting story to me because it takes place in a very interesting world, and and a uh, very uh, the character is is the landscape, and it's, again, the story that I think that's that's told many times. It's just not in this way and through these characters in a very really interesting world. Taylor Sheridan was the director who wrote Sicario with Denis Villeneuve, who I just worked with on the Story of Your Life. So there's a trickle down of like people you worked with and you want to still continue to work with and it's going to be I thought it initially was like a smaller sort of winter's bone type of movie that's a movie that Jennifer Lawrence came out in um, that kind of got her noticed but it's uh, I think it ended up being quite bigger than that and um, I think we'll be hearing some noise from that later on this year Again, but I didn't. I, did, I just finished wrapping the movie just a week ago. So I think you wrapped it right before you started this tour, right? Yeah, like exactly. literally the day before. And, and Elizabeth Olsen uh, is in it with me as well, which is really cool to work with her uh, in a very real way, you know, than kind of it's her in a corset and me and bow and arrow. Yeah. yeah. And I know that you have a production company with yeah. a partner. Yeah. So tell me about that and how that's influencing both the projects that you're choosing and the choices that you're making. It was initially started with my again one of my best friends that I one of the first guys I met in L.A. and we so we started this thing because there was opportunities that were going to come my way that I wouldn't have time to to gestate and um, so it's going to be more along like the, along the Hurt Lockers and the Towns and these types of movies are the ones we want to kind of keep continuing to do and not unlike Wind River and, and Kill the Messenger and and things like that that's what we're going to keep working towards and, and not all of them I'm going to be in there's one called The Founder that Michael Keaton's starring in about um, sort of almost the origin of, of fast food and about McDonald's and who really founded McDonald's and he plays Ray Kroc and it's a beautiful story. I'm not in it, um, but I love the quality of the content and it would be something I would do if I had the time or if I was of age, but uh, Michael Keaton really crushes it and it comes out August 5th and uh, Don and I are very excited about this one. And how do you view your role as a producer? Because I know you've become much more active as a producer. Yeah, yeah, it depends on, on, on each project. You know, this, for the founder, I was, this is like, we had to cook this up from the beginning. We had to get the rights to the McDonald's family and, and then start up and get up and get the writer together and work together on the script. There's a lot of people that just sit in a chair and just watch the monitor and, and think they're producing something. I'm like, I'm not sure what they're doing, but just kind of watching, you're an audience member. But um, so we just cooked this up from the beginning and I don't really micromanage. I let directors do their thing and just put a great team together and then worry about the end product at the end. Um, I, if you hire the right people in any business, you know, you hire great people to be at AOL, well then you know you don't have to micromanage their jobs. You know what I mean? You hire, you just hire the right, surround yourself with like-minded people, I feel like you'll be successful. And that's what producing is for me. It's like, they, let's hire a really, really tremendous talent and then you let them be Set great. Set them free. Yeah, exactly. And then support them in what they need, whoever it might be, whether it's a, a director or especially a director. You really want to support their vision um, and make sure uh, nothing gets in the way of that. Now, the last time we spoke was for Kill the Messenger, which I don't know how many of you That's saw, right. but it was, right. such, it, was, it was for that. It was. It was such a powerful, tremendous story. And I know that it was something that you had been passionate about, I mean, for a for a decade at least. Yeah, yeah. Do you have another Kill the Messenger in you that you're gestating? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of stories that are, that are interesting to me. Not, not, not something quite so on the political side of things, but I just think um, Steve McQueen, I think, is a really interesting guy. And uh, the story's not really been told on him for, for a lot of reasons. It's pretty complicated 
and doing biopics are very difficult. Um, that that is a very interesting guy I'd like to play. Um, so we've been trying to cook something up on that and we have a few other things, but we'll see. We'll see. There's there's a lot of things happening uh, creatively. Um, but I got to get all these big giant guys out the way in order to go do those, right? Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> look at you. Like, you have the power of choice, which most I'm actors blessed. don't have. Yeah, I'm very blessed because of that. It's a beautiful, beautiful place to be in. And on a lighter note, I know that one of your phobias is loose teeth. Yeah, man. Like, you know, yeah. kids who have teeth like that are about to fall out. You have a daughter. I know. How are you going to get over this phobia? I think, I'll, I think, it'll, <clears throat> I think it'll be okay with, with her, I think. I think. I, I don't you're going to have some issues if... Yeah, I mean, even like my goddaughter, I still have a problem. But I think it's, it's my own child. I think I, I'm going to have to suck it up and deal with it and pull that sucker out or, or she's going to swallow it eventually. She'll bite something. And, I'm like, I don't know, man. It's, it's the creepiest thing ever. Dude, you, you're, you're in a superhero movie. Come on. You've got to be able to overcome that. <laughs> I don't know. To me, it just freaks me out. I'm telling you. Teeth falling out. That's a terrible dream to have, and it's a terrible thing to see. I don't want to watch that. <laughs> Suck. Who knew that Hawkeye? Uh, Stop. Yeah, come on, man. It's disgusting. <laughs> so, yeah, like my, like my little niece chases me around the house. She's like, look, look, like in her feet. It's like barely hanging on by a piece of skin. I'm like, this is gross. <laughs> Trying to eat my breakfast. <laughs> See, this is why we love this guy. <laughs> and now let's uh, get a few audience questions in, please. Hi, thank you for being here. Hi, what's your name? Teresa. Hi, Teresa. My best friend is watching live from Chicago. Her name's Mimi, and she loves you, so this question's from her. Hi, Mimi. Um, <laughs> she wants to know, what's the most challenging role you've had so thus far, and why? Oh, wow. Well, again, they're all challenging for different reasons. You know, playing Jeffrey Dahmer was a very challenging, probably the most challenging, because we shot it in two weeks. I didn't know anything about the guy. And, you know, is a complete opposite of, of who I am. I didn't have a lot to inject of my own into that guy. So that was probably the most challenging, because the amount of time and then how far that character away was from me personally. So I guess it would be that one. And it scarred me for life. And then once you learned about him, I bet you really, you know, were happy that you played him. I don't know about happy that I played him. I'm just glad, I, I'm glad it's all over. <laughs> hey, Jeremy. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, big fan of yours. Uh, so uh, since uh, your character is uh, vastly different from the comics, like, do you wish that he was a bit more from the comics? Or do you feel that he's you know, better off as he is on screen. You're talking about Hawkeye? Yeah. Um, well, look, they, 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 I don't write this stuff, okay? <laughs> I, all I gotta, my job is to make truth out of all of it. And I think they're using more of the ultimate sort of version. And again, I, I, I can't, I'll speak out of turn because I don't really follow the comics. I'll, I'll stay true to what is given to me in the scripts and let those guys know because like the Russo brothers are huge fans. Joss Whedon, I, see, I think, sits at the throne with Kevin Feige of, of this universe. And I'll let them make those decisions. And I'll just inject the truth into it. Um, that's all I can do, you know? Next question, please. Hey, Jeremy, man. Where'd you Hi. Go? Hey, what's How's up? It How's it going? Uh, kind of to piggyback off your answer, I was wondering if your approach changed at all since this is your first Russo Brothers movie and your first time working with the screenwriters. I was wondering if there was like a different approach you had to acting or reading the script because I think I heard previously in the interview that reading, you know, these superhero scripts aren't, you know, very easy to do. Yeah. I was wondering if your approach changed at all as opposed to working with the same people on a Whedon film to now a Russo's film. <clears throat> well, reading any of those scripts I think is very dense and confusing. Um, there's a, there's a, a lot, so much going on and so many storylines within in these things and uh, it's hard to really follow unless, you know, <laughs> I don't have time to follow at all, man. <laughs> and it's stone. I'm, I'm confused. I'm like, I have to, so when I watch these, when I'm going to watch this movie, I'm going to be like, oh my, that, that happens? Where did this Black Panther guy come from? I didn't even know Spider-Man was in this sucker until the other day. 
So I like to I like to keep it that way, so I can you know be a fan when I watch these things like everybody else. You know, uh, I do my part. So I I trust in again people that know what they're doing. And like I said, with the, to the other guy here, it's all I let them they, let them puppeteer all that stuff. I got to inject truth into this thing, and I care about the relationships that I'm involved in in these movies. I care about the truth the, the, uh, of Hawkeye. And that's the most important thing to me. The more relationships there are, then that's what matters. Also, that's what I, th I think fans like. I think that's why this is going to be a giant movie, um, because there's, the relationships are, are, are growing and deepening and, and, and splintering. Um, but in the difference between Josh and Russo brothers, I, you know, it's a very different thing. You know, it's, Josh is very, very particular, knows exactly what he wants, and the Russo brothers know what they want, but they kind of vacillate and in the humor, and they just let you just do random takes, and if they feel like you're good at one-liners and sort of thing, oh, well, okay, let's, uh, by committee, try to make the best best thing possible. And, um, but it's great. I'm excited to go uh, jump into Avengers 3, 4, and see what happens. And we have time for one final question, please. Hi, Jeremy. Oh, here you are. Yeah. Done on set, have you been injured? And I wanted to know, would you be willing to explore Clint's character in a Netflix series? Um, injuries, I've no, I never, never really had any. I mean, you get banged up a bit. Usually, I get banged up in the in the stunt gym. Um, it's usually like hand to hand fighting, things like that. Um, we get contusions, golf ball size, sort of. Yeah, nothing, nothing really that big. I never. They usually, usually all the stunts are very prepared. The ones that look very dangerous are so well prepared and worked out that it, it's almost hard to, to, unless something goes wrong, a cable snaps and then, you know, there's a real accident. But and, uh, knock on wood, I've never had that problem. The real, I think the, the, the most difficult thing to do on camera is run. And, you, and it's the silliest thing to, that you think of, but you get, because it's easy to roll an ankle if the ground's uneven and you're trying to look at the camera and do the, it's really easy to roll an ankle and guess who's not even walking for the rest of the day, let alone just running. So all the stunts and flips and random things, you're on a wire, there's a pad, or not always a pad, but either way, yeah. So I don't get injured. Don't get injured, luckily. And then Netflix series and Hawkeye, I don't know. Again, that's, these aren't decisions to, to make of mine. You know, they just, they just aren't. Like, I don't, I don't even think I get to ask what I'm gonna eating for lunch today. It's just like, here, here's your sandwich, eat it. I'm like, okay, what's next? You know, I'm like. <laughs> what's next? This is not my life. <laughs> what's next is that this opens May 3rd. It does? It does! It's May 3rd? It, for real. Oh, I thought it was later than that. May 3rd. May 6th. May 6th. Oh my God. See, I, you're wrong. I'm oh, wrong. Oh, I stand corrected. May, May 6th. 6th. So thank you so much for being here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. <laughs>